Hello, thank you for giving me a moment to spend with you. I'd like to share with you my heart regarding the events that have taken place recently in our nation that have resulted in two African-American males losing their lives through senseless killing and our nation being thrown into deep pain. I know that as a result of these incidents, some people are afraid, some are angry, others are embarrassed, and still others just desire justice. And I want you to know that all of these are very valid feelings. In fact, Akiba and I share many of those feelings with you. As I think about these situations, my mind goes back to an incident involving my eldest son, Avery. He and Akiba were at a store one day, and as they were preparing to leave, he went ahead of her to the car. And after she showed up a bit later than expected, she found him standing outside the car with a police vehicle next to him. And when she asked him what had occurred, he said that the police arrived and asked him what was he doing standing in front of that particular car. And when he said that it was his mother's car, the police officer didn't move, just stayed there watching him until Akiva arrived and they left together. And I want you to know that the memory of that situation has always been unsettling for me, but it's particularly unsettling to recall in the wake of these two killings. And I want you to know that what happened to George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey were complete racial injustices. And many individuals from both within the African-American community and without are being impacted by these events. Whether it's because you are a black male or you have black male relatives, or you may not even be from the uh, African-American race, but you have black male friends, various emotions are now filling your heart. Some people are walking in fear of something like that happening to them or their loved one. Others are feeling the possibility of being ostracized or criticized because although they are not African-American, they may be ostracized and criticized because the color of their skin is the same as that white shooter skin. Or some people are not walking in fear, but they're just angry and they're wanting revenge. And I want you to know all of those are understandable feelings under these circumstances, but we as the body of Christ are not called to live with those emotions. Rather, the word of God tells us that at a time like this, we are to walk in unity and in love because Jesus promised that when his people walk in unity, he would be in their midst and he could ask, we could ask whatever we desired on behalf of this nation and it would be done. And at a time when the people of our nation are divided, Many are in an uproar displaying even more hatred and destruction through riots and much civil unrest. We must be the light in the midst of all of this darkness. We have to be the ones who are standing in unity as the body of Christ across racial and ethnic lines to show the world how individuals from different races and backgrounds are able to dwell in harmony, even in a fractured world. Why? Because society is looking for an answer to the racial tension that it's experiencing. And we, the body of Christ, we have the answer. It is the unity that can only come through the power of the Holy Spirit in a relationship with Christ. So as we come upon Pentecost Sunday, which is tomorrow, I'm gonna ask that you pray with me. I'm gonna ask that you pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will dwell with us as we go through these tragedies that justice will be done. I want us to pray for the families of Ahmad Aubrey and George Floyd, that the peace and the comfort of God that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and minds. I want us to pray for the protection of African-American males, that they would not only be able to walk in safety in America, but also in the security, that they will not have to risk danger because of the color of their skin. And also I want us to pray for those outside of the African-American race, those who are hurting and those who are just as disgusted as African-Americans are, but are nevertheless being grouped in with those hate-filled perpetrators because their skin color is the same. And above all, let's pray for the body of Christ, that we might be closer to each other and closer to the Lord than ever before, so that those who are walking in darkness during these times will be drawn to the light of God's love and his unity as it shines through us. Let's pray.
Father God, we thank you that you are a sovereign God and you are a just God. And you told us that we can loose things here on earth and they would be loosed in heaven. We loose your justice upon these two matters now. We also, God, loose the fullness of your peace and comfort upon the families of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd. Draw them closer to you than ever before. My God, I pray for African-American males throughout our country that you would not only give them safety, but you would give them the security to walk throughout this country without fear of danger. My God, we pray for those outside of the African-American community, that they would not be necessarily bunched into the uh, group of all of those who are filled with hate on the inside of their hearts. But Lord, we would be able to walk as one within the body of Christ, as you have made us one. I thank you, my God, that you hear us when we pray, and you're going to act on our behalf to bring healing to this land. And we pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you for giving me a moment to be with you. And as I close, I ask that you resist wasting time on social media, engaging in meaningless debate over these tragedies. It can only lead to further division. And Jesus said, a house divided against itself, even God's house cannot stand. Instead, let's focus our hearts and unite our hearts on the Lord so that the Holy Spirit will invade our presence and help us bring life out of these senseless deaths. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.